Thomas Boston was a Scottish Presbyterian pastor in the early part of the 18th century, uh, and he uh, was planted in one congregation for a long period of time in the town of Ettrick. And many of his writings actually began as sermons uh, that were then developed into uh, works for publication, many of them even after his death. And so these writings come from a reformed perspective. They're very sound doctrinally, and yet you can tell that they were written to be preached and to be heard and to be believed. Uh, they're written in a warm style, uh, very engaging to the reader, and have been some of the most uh, influential works within Scottish Christian life for centuries. Thomas Boston is important to read because he's very sound on three key areas. Uh, first, Thomas Boston understands what man is, uh, what, it, what it is to be lost in sin, what it is to be redeemed and living in grace, what it is to be anticipating glory to come. Uh, secondly, Thomas Boston very clearly understands the gospel. Uh, the need for the gospel to be preached freely to all men, uh, that all of God's people might be gathered in. Uh, Boston is insistent on a, a freely preached, beautiful gospel, and you, you read that in his works. And then thirdly, Thomas Boston has a, a wonderful grasp of covenant theology with works both on the covenant of works and on the covenant of grace. Uh, Boston gives a, a sound, warm, evangelical understanding of covenant theology. Some of the most well-known and most influential of Boston's works are, first of all, his Notes on the Marrow. Uh, the book, The Marrow of Modern Divinity, uh, caused a real theological uproar in Scotland in the 1720s, or late 17-teens, 1720s, and the book was banned, uh, couldn't be reprinted. And so Boston wrote notes on it uh, that could be uh, published. They were published initially in 1726 and were hugely influential in decades of doctrinal development thereafter. Now, secondly, Boston wrote a spiritual memoir of his own life. Uh, he wrote it intending just for his family to read it. He never intended it to be published, but some 40 years after his death, his grandson had it edited and republished, or published for the first time. Uh, and that uh, Boston's memoirs uh, is, has been one of the most formative spiritual biographies in the history of the Scottish Church. And then third, uh, Boston's, actually the first work that he had published, uh, Human Nature in Its Fourfold State, uh, where he looks at man in innocence all the way through sin, redemption, mankind in glory. Uh, it also has been uh, one of the most widely influential books in Scottish church history and a, a wonderful, moving presentation of what mankind is uh, even to this present day. I think the, the significance of Thomas Boston in my own experience has, has really been threefold. Uh, one is the, uh, the warmth of his gospel presentation. He is a man who very clearly wants to see the gospel proclaimed to everyone, not just to the respectable people, uh, but to all who have ears to hear. Uh, and he does so with, uh, with great power and great, uh, great beauty in, in his presentation of the gospel. Uh, secondly, Thomas Boston's covenant theology uh, presents to us a, a covenant theology that is both rigorous and at the same time warm and concerned with the salvation of sinners. And then thirdly is Thomas Boston's career and his labor as a pastor. Uh, he pastored for a long time in what were considered very obscure churches at the time, uh, all the while preaching uh, pastoring his people, writing out sermons, uh, and we can see in his collected works now uh, all the, the decades and decades of faithful labor, the fruit of those labors. And it's a challenge to pastors everywhere that even if uh, we not, might not be on great speaking tours, our labors among the flock uh, are valuable and they're beautiful in Christ's sight.